Hey, so welcome to chapter 3. Chapter 3 has our first look at the battle preparations menu, which is really important, but it's also got a whole bunch of like other kind of weird things going on, and I have a lot to explain in this chapter, so I'm gonna be talking really, really fast the whole time. First, what's happening is we're inside Doro, which is Sakuma's snail unit, and we're just kind of like hanging out, chilling, talking about stuff, and then all of a sudden, the Black Swarm attacks us, and get used to that plot point because it happens a lot. So here's the battle preparations menu, we have options of tactics, card deck, hangar, talk, badlands, two player, and system. And we only ever care about the top three options. And I'm going to preview the hangar right now, even though we don't actually need it in this chapter. So in the hangar we can buy, sell, and equip weapons, we can give units paint jobs, we can rename them if you wanted to, and we can also level up Sakuma, which we'll talk about way, way later. But for right now, all we're going to do is we're going to change our team's logo to this sweet ass dog, which is uh, basically going to give us perfect RNG for the whole run, guaranteed. And for something much less important now, we're going to go into the cards menu and we're going to break the fucking game in half. So what cards are, um, it's basically this like, really big topic that I'm going to talk about all the time. But they're sort of like stabs from Fire Emblem in that they fill a whole bunch of different miscellaneous purposes that you would struggle to fit into the game otherwise. Like moving your allies around and healing and doing more damage and stuff like that. Um, but what I'm doing right this second is I'm drawing some crests. And crests are these hidden symbols they are supposed to find for the late game. But you can also find some of them like on the Drone Tactics, Tactics official website, I guess like as a promotional thing, I don't know, it doesn't matter. The point is, I'm drawing these crests and I'm getting a whole bunch of these free cards that I'm not supposed to have yet. And these are some really fucking good cards. And we're going to use these cards throughout the entire game, we're going to save a ton of turns with them. Um, I'm only going to use three this chapter, and I'm only going to have time to talk about two of them, but I'll get to that in a second. First, got to talk about how cards actually work. So they're broken up into two categories, map and battle. Map cards are basically the ones you use outside of battle instead of attacking, and battle ones are the ones you use in battle while you're attacking, to put it simply. You can only take 20 cards into any given map in your deck, and uh, we're going to run into problems later on in the game where we don't have enough deck space to do everything we want to do, but we'll get to that later. So the two cards I want to talk about first are Cricket Song and Tri-Tetra, which we're going to use in this chapter. Cricket Song is a really good healing card that heals everyone within 5 squares radius of you for 100 HP. And Tri-Tetra is kind of weird. It lets you put down 3 instances of destructible walls in adjacent tiles. And we're going to use that this turn, sorry, this chapter to block an ant from attacking Subasa. So he instead has to go and attack Yamato and Suicide, basically. But now I gotta talk about the snail, because he continues to be kind of weird and, and like, important. So we're gonna start every chapter from now on with all of our units docked inside of the snail. And that really is kind of a pain in the ass, it means that we have to spend at least one turn every chapter just organizing ourselves. He's also technically our first cannon unit, even though he's pretty bad at it. And, um, guns and melee work fundamentally the same, like you use them on adjacent enemies, and the enemy can counterattack, but cannons you use at range, and the enemy can never counterattack against your cannons. So right now Sakuma's range is 2 through 4, which means he can hit any enemy within 2 to 4 squares away from him. And uh, the only thing we can really get out of Sakuma right now is just chip damage, and that's basically going to be true for the whole game. The important thing to note about cannons is that you cannot move and then use your cannon like you can with everything else. You have to just like stay stationary. So when we get more cannon units throughout the game, we're going to be spending a lot of like turns doing weird things to get them into the spots they need to be in so that they can do their jobs. But enough about that. For now I'm going to talk about movement type because that's going to be pretty important in this level as well. So there are two main categories of movement. There's ground units and flying units. Obviously Subas is flying. So what that means is that she doesn't incur any terrain bonuses when she's on terrain, but she also doesn't have any penalties when she's moving through them, so... Yamato is a ground unit, and that means like he g does get that defense bonus from forests, but moving into a forest costs him two points of movement instead of one, whereas Subasa can just fly over it. There are three types of ground movement. There are tires, treads, and legs. Yamato's got legs, and they're like the middle ground, second best, second worst. They don't really, they don't incur as many penalties as tires do, but they're not great. Treads on their hand are fucking awesome, but they're pretty rare. They basically totally ignore trees and they totally ignore sand in terms of penalties. Tires are really bad, and uh, they just suck. And you get our first look at tires here on the Stag Beetle unit. So we got two new allies now. We have Shoya, who's like Yamato's friend from school, and his little sister Yui. So. Like I said, they're friends with Subasa and Yamato from school. So he is kind of like the rival character to Yamato's hero. And Yui is his really timid little sister and like definitely the wrong person to be piloting fucking robots. My opinion. 
Um, here we're going to use the Beasting card, and I don't have enough time to talk about it, even though it's really super important. I'll get to it in the next chapter. But I'm going to spend the rest of this chapter talking about unit types, because I really should and I haven't yet. So, as you can probably tell by now, the Rana Beetle is like this Bruiser kind of a uh, class. It's got the single best melee in the entire game, which is awesome. It's got, I'm going to say, the second best defense of any unit, and it's got pretty good HP too, but it struggles to get anywhere because it's only got four movement and legs, which are basically totally medi mediocre. The Butterfly, on the other hand, flies and has five movement, which lets you fill so much of miscellaneous purposes that the Rana Beetle can't. It's actually got really good guns as well, but we don't usually use her for damage. And the Butterfly also has this weird secondary thing that doubles the power of all healing cards, but I don't think that ever really comes up, actually, so don't worry about it. The Stag Beetle, pictured here, is sort of like the midpoint between the Butterfly and the Rhino Beetle. It's actually our second best combat unit right now, in terms of melee, so we're going to use him multi for that, even though he does have pretty good guns as well, and six movement and tires, so he can fill a whole bunch of, like, long-range miscellaneous shit that the Butterfly can. It's pretty versatile. The Firefly, on the other hand, as you just saw, has like giant ass lasers. It's technically our first cannon unit, like our first real cannon unit, and we'll talk more about Yui later, but for now basically know that she's her main purpose is just to do a ton of damage to things at range. And now what's happening here is we killed the last enemy on the map, but the map didn't end. We like this enemy reinforcement just popped up on our fucking turn, like right in the middle of it. Real dick move. And he used a card, which is our first introduction to cards actually. And what it did is it did Zero damage to Yui, Shoya, Subasa, and Yamato, and kind of made them explode. It doesn't make any fucking sense. None of this makes any fucking sense. And uh, then we just kill him with Yamato and Sakuma, and that's chapter 3 beaten in 6 turns. And to briefly continue about unit types, the snail is bad. It's pretty tanky, but it doesn't do anything else besides that, really. And then there are the 4 unit types that the enemies had. The ants, water striders, water bugs, which you first saw in this chapter, and mosquitoes. And they're like this weird subtext of enemies only classes that just fucking suck like that that's their shtick they're bad they're like the goombas of the black swarm army or whatever and um as we get farther into the game you'll see them be phased out almost completely 